Yes, guys, welcome, welcome to the midday session, you know, the lunchtime, lunchtime break. So, you know, this, <laughs> it, it's not normal to see Ian and Ian midday, but as you know, we're here to educate, motivate, and inspire. And whatever that takes, we're willing to make the sacrifice. So this afternoon, we're here with Bishop Kanye Parkinson, principal and founder also a professional security training institute. One is in Mandeville and one in Santa Cruz. Right, Mr. Canil? Are you hearing us? So we may be having a little we may be having a little technical difficulty, but fans, we are gonna be having good a great afternoon. Hello? Yes. Good afternoon. All right, so we realize that Mr. Kenny is still in his office. So as you know how it goes. Once you're in the office, you know, calls come in from time to time. So we just want to say that we, we hope that you guys will be inspired this afternoon. And with me, it's no other than Ian the Olympian, who you all know too well. So Ian, you know, welcome again, man. We are here again another midday. <laughs> all right. All right, guys. So welcome again um thank you for another goddess spirit of life for another episode um, um on a thursday um real talk with ian and ian uh, we're so inspired we're so excited to have um coming live from jamaica today with another program um you know that we're gonna bring to you so today we just you know gonna bring something different something new um, you know, and um, we hope that you enjoy the program and um, we promise you that, um, you know, the Lord has been keeping us and guiding us. And I know that um, today's program, you know, we hope that you may inspire and educate in some way. So I'm going to wait till uh, Mr. Canil and a lot of you guys know are familiar with this uh, Parkinson. It's a very, um, you know popular name up in the parish of St. Elizabeth. So we're going to find out um, now. So let me bring uh, Mr. Keneal in, um, see if he's, yep, yeah, um, all right. All right, good afternoon, Mr. Khalil. Are you hearing us clear? I'm hearing you clearly, Ian and Ian. All right, so we just want you to welcome yourself. Just give us a quick 90 second of your name and um you know what uh it, where exactly are you right now and um just anything else you'd like to share about yourself just for a quick night introduction good afternoon jamaica good afternoon fans being from right across the world my name is Kanil farkison come with a lot of titles such as bishop pastor security trainer founder of professional security training institute as i speak to you I'm in the fruit basket, I'm in the bread basket, I'm where all the food leave for Kingston and other places. That's St. Elizabeth. <laughs> right. Santa Cruz, St. Elizabeth. All right, man. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, um, yeah. All right. All right, Ian. So, I'm a... Um, you know, you guys know that I'm the I'm the I'm the Olympian, but to, today we're gonna um, the health and wellness specialist. Um, he's gonna be um, kicking the program off, so um, we're really excited. All right, Mister. Uh, I'll say Bishop Ferguson. I I, I like the, the bishop. You know, I always teaching and 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 and. And, and bring in the gospel. I, I like that. So first thing I just want to say, you know, it, it, it is a pleasure to have you here on the platform and just to know what you're doing there in um, St. Elizabeth and Manchester. But first of all, we just want to know where this started from. Where did you get this vision, you know, of such, you know, a, a, a big plan for the country, security? This vision started in... 2016, 
uh, due to the fact that I was a security officer, I worked with guardsmen, I worked with a few companies. So the need came about when I saw that the security was in demand. It was in increasing demands and there was a lot of young persons and other persons who wanted to get in but never know how to. So the vision came about wanting to reach young people, wanting to... Maybe having a little internet interruption here. As I said, coming from Jamaica, sometimes the internet is not as good as, you know, you broadcasting from other areas, and especially now the kids are using the internet. So we're going to see if we could get back Mr. Keneal on. And his, his mic is muted. So, Ian, as you can see, we are, we are basically having some difficulties. But, you know, for this program, we're known to have difficulties. And if you guys had started out with us, following us in the beginning, you would have realized that we have overcome a lot of it. We had time when we had to restart the program. We had time that we had to um, basically extend the time to start. You know, several things happen. And, you know, as we say that we're here and we're willing to go through the challenge just to make sure that you guys can sit back, relax, and be entertained and also be inspired, motivated, and basically learn something and you know for us today bringing on a security personnel you know it, it couldn't come at a better time when we look at our country and see what is happening in, in our country with the crime rate and everything going up we all know that the security officer they play a very important role and at some time i believe this is you know overlooked in terms of the the the, 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 the role that they play in our society and really bringing on Mr. Keneal Ferguson. We wanted to dig a little deeper into it. You know, basically the life of a security officer. And 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 I really want to share a story while 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 he's there. And I, I'm gonna have a quick question for him. You know, regarding the whole security. You know, I I I know back in Jamaica, security here and another name for security they call you Gadi. You know, <laughs> it's a, like a it's a popular name in in, in Jamaica. Gadi. Well, that, well, well, you know the 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 company name Guardsman. So after a while, you know how our culture is. We like to shorten things. Really easy to say. It, so um, you know, so Guardman, Guardy, um, you know. But I, with all respect, the, you know, they they are security officers. <laughs> yep, that 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 that, that that's a term that I I, I really would love for everybody to refer to them as security officers because they really provide security not just for a country but for you for your property for your community you know and they play just as important of a role as our law enforcement officers that we would consider our police you know and our soldiers you know but as i said a lot of time the, the, their, their jobs been been overlooked and really, they are key personnel. Because even as you walk into a business place, sometimes the first person you see is a security officer who is maintaining the peace, you know. Uh, and, and it is very important. And, and, you know, security officer to me, as I said, they're very, very important. Because, as I said, going into a business, sometimes just to... Um, security officers in Jamaica are very... Um, I would say that they're very knowledgeable. They're also help with customer service you know um, because when you come in you got to point what direction to go um, you know and and just their presence sometime um, it makes a big difference um, with it so uh, we find that we don't have we don't have actually have to have police at every single event uh, you know because we know that the police our, their goal is to be out there fighting crime so if we take all the police and put them <laughs> to, to to you know to, to to stand in front of the store and, and thing, we'll never have anybody to um you know to 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 make sure that they're out there trying to um enforce the law. So that's where the, the security officers are coming because many times, you know, by law, the, the employees of the store they can't 
they, 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 you know, it's, it's not respectful and it's hard when someone in a uniform, you know, you go into the banks, it's the same situation. Um, you know, and you know, you know, you deal with money and people going in and out, um, you know, especially in supermarket and especially for, for games and stuff, you got some security yeah, officers that move around with the dogs. You know, um, I remember at Stets, you know, we know that people could jump the fence and it's not everything you need a firearm, you know, um, you know, cause some, some event um, is just, just to keep um, things in order, you know, and, and all that. Um, but we know that um, security officer now, uh, plenty of security officers are, 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 are using, are carrying firearms because you got different levers of security officers, uh, you know. But when I travel over to Korea, Japan, and all those countries, and police officers doesn't doesn't carry a firearm, you know. They they carry a little stick, <laughs> 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 you know. And and um, they're very well respected over there. So it just you know different culture. So um, you know, but we know that um, it's also provide um, work for a lot of young people that leave in high school that don't have a job you know so this is a career that could give you something to do to 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 you know to to to, to a quick career so you know so those are some of the things i wanted to talk to uh mr Kalneel about um how do you get into this um profession this career um what's the criteria what type of training do, do they do uh, and so on so we just um, really waiting for him to come back, and we'll just um, talk some more about it until um, he has um, show up. Uh, so over to you, Ian. Yeah. So once once he comes in, there's a question I'm gonna ask him. But before, I'm just gonna share this, Ian, because personally, I don't think many people know that I actually work as a security officer. Security officer. Uh, that was my first job in the USA. And I'm going to share something because my question I want to ask him, you know, as a profession, it's a noble profession, humble, but yet still it is being looked down by, 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 by majority of our, 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 our society, our community, in that they look at it, as you call the name, Yadi, which is, is, it doesn't sound well when they perform such a, a high level of risk in terms of putting themselves out there to, to defend and protect our country or community, or businesses, you know, it, it, it is sad. So I'm going to share the story, Ian. So, you know, when I was back in Jamaica, you know, I actually had held a few respectable jobs, jobs that they would consider being respectable. I was the um, assistant sports coordinator for the College of Agriculture, Science, and Education case. I went to Appleton. I was the overseer slash manager for part of the Appleton estate. I also went to um, Grace Kennedy, junior manager there for one of the store in Mandeville. And I also worked with the uh, Minister of Agriculture, Rural Agriculture Development, Arthur Trade, RADA. So if you check my record in Jamaica, you would say that I know I had some pretty good job that was a you know, respectable job, could basically bring in a nice little earning. So guess what now? When it was time for me to come to America, you know, I was thinking in myself, Ian, that, you know, with all my experience, my knowledge, my qualification, and I would come to the America and get a quick job like right away. I, I shouldn't be taking too much time to, to find a job since I have so much experience. And, and I'm not just that the experience, but I have uh, some certificate to show, you know. But Ian, surprisingly, man, when I got to the US, you know, my social security took a little time to come because, you know, I actually I've gotten a job with the county. I had my green card, everything, but it took me a while to get my secure, social security card. And they held the job almost a month, but then when I realized that you know, it didn't come in, I didn't know the whole process, so I was just waiting. But I should have checked because something had went wrong and it didn't go all the way through with my social security number. So I would have been waiting forever. But the gentleman said, Ian, I can't hold the job any longer. You did well on the interview. I'm trying my best to keep this job for you, but you know, he'd been pressured. So with that, after that, yeah, it was the most challenging thing. You know, I got my um, social security number after I realized what was the problem. And it was the most challenging thing to get a job. And, you know, I was hunting, looking all over every field that I think I could actually fit in. It was challenging in the U.S. They're looking for the experience. They're looking for the USA certification and all that stuff. 
And I can really remember my wife wanted me to go straight into nursing. And I'm like, no, baby, I want to be the man of the house. I want to provide. I want to go out there and work. I just don't want to just go to school and you be taking care of me. I, I was never brought up that way. I never used to life that way yet. And what happened? I'm still looking. And, and a gentleman, you know, said, Ian, uh, could I talk to you? And I could see the look on his face. You know, he didn't look like he, 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 he thought I was going to welcome the idea what he was going to share with me. And he said to me, you know, Ian, I think you could probably look into security. I could hear the little stutter in his voice when he's telling me you now to look for a security job that most time it was paid like $9 an hour. You know, look, if you get 10 to $12, you have to be like a supervisor. And when he told me about it, I said, how you mean, man? Let, let me get on board. Let me know how I go about doing this thing. And Ian, tell you the truth. My first job was a security officer in the hospital that I actually came through to you know, do my nursing and everything. But my first year I got there, I got a job as a security officer. And I remember now in that when I called back to Jamaica, you know, call my friend in North Jamaica, looking that Ian would get a good big job, you know, probably a, a white shirt, you know, white collar type of job. So when I tell him, say, hey, I'm a security officer. Why I can't remember my friend, you know, I won't call any name. The man said to me, Where's it? You got it. The man said, You got it. And it didn't take long for him to ask if I have a button or a gun. <laughs> I tell him, No, man, I, I don't have none of them. He said, Okay, oh, yeah, you got it. <laughs> kind of, so right away, you could see that they were kind of looking down on the profession and a whole. But I want to tell you something about that job. That job was one of my best jobs. Because I, I actually got the supervisor of security um, for the hospital. So I was able to run all over the hospital, doing all different type of tours. Anything happened, man. If they lock the same outside of the office, they call security to, to open it. If they have a dead man going to the morgue, they want security to walk beside them. If they get locked out of the vehicle, they want security to do it. If they throw a piece of paper in the shredder bin, they want security to open it. So we realize that security plays such a vital role, you know, it, 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 it's some simple things it may look like, but without it, you can't move on. I remember one night, the nursing supervisor at the hospital, she basically had left um, the keys for some very important department at home. And trust me, it's a security van that she sent me and my friend to go home to the husband to get the keys so she could still run the, the organization. And I was allowed to go for the key. I go for the key because security are trustworthy people. With the, the whole keys, you know, for, for some serious locks. And, yeah. and, and, and they take some position that is serious. So they're trustworthy. So first thing, being a, a security officer, I think that that is part that comes with it. Discipline, and you got to be trustworthy. And, you know, with these, that, that, that was one of the questions I really wanted to ask, you know, Mr. Ferguson, is that how his take on that when, you know, a lot of the officers, you know, they're providing such a... a, a, a a, 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 a service, but yet still they've been looked down upon by society in that, like, it's just a little job, you know? It's just, you know, and that's just a, 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 a stigma. We, we stereotype people by what they do, but it is a decent earning, living, you know, you're living a clean life and, and living. So I really just want to say a big shout out to all the security officers out there. I respect the work that you guys been doing. I respect the sacrifice because Ian, you know, some of these jobs that they go on, I'm just sharing because I was in that field. They're very risky. You know, you, while people are in their bed sleeping, you're being asked to go out there and protect your property. Stand guard. You know, when you know majority of the outside world that is walking after dark is looking to break that place, to tear it apart. But yet still, you got to be out there. And as I said, sometimes you don't even have a gun. You, 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 you don't even have anything to defend yourself, but you're just there standing or just holding that foot. And the only thing sometimes is the uniform. Some people, they just look at the uniform and they fear the uniform that you may have something under that uniform. But really and truly, it's a risky job. And these officers, they put their life on the line, I'd say, every single day so that we may live a more fulfilling and comfortable life. Even going into the business place, you know, we see you go into the supermarkets, you're going there with money. You know, you're traveling, sometimes you have a lot of money in your pocket, you're going to pick up money. 
you know, and, and, and you need that security presence. So we just got to give it up to the security officers for what they've been doing. And I really want to give it up to um, Bishop Ferguson and the founder and principal of that security school and a professional security training institute. Because that's a vision that I really wanted to hear him talk about personally. You know, so you know, we're not sure if we're going to be able to get him back. But yeah, I don't know if you have any other take to say about it. But you know, I just say that they provide a, 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 a senior service for us. Yep. I mean, you know, I, I, I mean, I can't go into more details. I just could tell you that, um, you know, you heard about Homeland Security here in America. And um, you know that, uh, you know, back in the days, they used to be a regular security, but they have actually moved up to a federal employee right now. You know, so you come to the airport and in Jamaica, you see it's the same thing that people that works at the airport and all around there um, are security officers. And, um, you know, as I said, their primary responsibility um, is to keep the peace, you know, with, with, with everything that they do, um, just to uh, able to. So it, it's very important. I mean, I, I just know that um, it, we could not function as a society without them without security officers. And I know it's gonna to come to the point where schools gonna have security officers, you know, um, most of the schools up in the city area, I know in the country, we probably have our own, um, you know, we, we might have somebody on campus, you know, the, the, the man that opened the gate, you don't really have a name for him, but he does a lot of things, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you know, see, see if he's back, not, yeah. <laughs> no, he's not back. He's 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 trying to connect, but he's just um not coming all the way through. He's buffering in and out. Uh okay. that, so just just gotta wait for him. So um yeah, but um uh, just on that note, um, you know, I, if you prefer if you want, I could share some videos. Um uh, um yeah, 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 yeah. He's uh oh, I'm not seeing the comments, but yeah, um, yeah, he's he's having some his device is not connecting, so I'm not sure. Not coming yeah, all right. the way through. All right. So another thing as you were touching, Ian, the basis of employment. I can I vouch for that again in Jamaica. We have a lot of people coming out of high school. You know, me and you would be into the high school system. And you realize that sometimes you, you, you go through your, your parents, they have spent so much on you to make sure you get a good education. And getting that education, sometimes you come out and trust me, you can't find a job. But, you know, security, I think, is always an opening door there to get yourself, you know, at least in the work, workforce. You know, so with that, security have provided a lot of employment for our countrymen and women who some of them it is their first job and i i believe with having a job such as a security job it teach you discipline it teach you patience you know it teach you communication skills because as as an officer everybody that get lost or lose something <laughs> they, they believe that the security know how to find their you know their way around they, they basically, instead of going to any bystander, you see a security. That's the person you're going to first. You're yeah. like, and you know, this is a safe, safe, safe option. So mm -hmm. you want to check out the security officer. So sometimes you realize that security, they perform even job outside of their job scope. Uh, you know, in that everything I tell you, yeah, when I was working the security job here in America, every single thing, man, they ask security to do. But for me, it was just fun, just running and doing the things and just making uh, I'm friends and creating certain relationship as I go through. When I finally became a nurse in the hospital, yeah, I knew every single person that worked at the hospital. Because, you know, in, in America, yeah, they give us, this is how they track us, you know. They give us a little um, thing look like a pen, a big. <laughs> and they have some um, spots like, like metal, you know, it, you know, look like you, magnetic stuff. Well, they, they call it diggy when I got it. And you every room that you have to go, you have to go there and touch it. And it records your time that you touch it. So you can't be working and say you you walk those 
that property or the compound. Because you have to touch that thing and it's going to record your time. So it's tracking you right through. So in that job, I was not allowed to even take much of a break. Because, you know, things was always happening. You sit down to, to have a break and trust me, there's a call coming in from somewhere. And, and it's a call that you can't ignore. So that's how crucial or critical a security officer job is. You know? Oh, you know, very, 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 very important. Um, you know, you find that the training is very also very, very um you go through a lot of training, um, you know, because when you're doing this type of job, you always have to be on your A game, you know. You can't um you can't wait for something to happen. You know, you always gotta treat everybody and look at every situation that like it's um you know li like it's the same so it's it's something that um you know you know um you know it might be easy look easily sometime when you sit down and you know and you or you stand up you know but your eyes are very important you got to keep your eyes because you could one or two one minute or one split second that could be the difference um, of you um, able to do your job better. So I'm not sure, Mr. Canil. I don't know if he need to restart his phone or something, but it's just um, not coming through. Is um, see that he's trying to get back on, but it's not coming all the way through. Um, yeah, so we're not sure what what uh yeah what's the situation but let me let me go ahead um um, um yeah so um yeah ian so um if you could send him a message ask him to reach yep. out I'm to him something Yeah, Ian, thank you for taking us back down to memory, man. So, guys, if you're watching Ian and Ian now and you didn't see that interview with Shevon, I would I encourage you guys to go right back and, and watch that. That was a story, you know, Shevon and Jamie. And that's a true love life story to Ian, even though we're talking about security, but even security in marriage, very important. <laughs> you know, when you look at your life, man, you know, you, 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 that, that, that's a life that's an you know, example. You know, Siobhan, we just want to give a big shout out to her. Have her bouncing baby boy there. And I see he, he turned six months. You know, we're very happy to have had Siobhan here on the platform. You know, really, really beautiful couple. She and Jamie you know, yes, together. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yes. So, um, yeah. So, you know, we will, we definitely, um, yep, you know, just hoping for if we could hear a word from, Mr. Farkinson, um, I know that he has um, been in the parish. I would love to talk to him. Um, I wanted to get a little history about him. Where exactly was he from um, in the parish and what school did he go to? And you know, what were some of the challenges that he faced you know, before he you know, get to where he's at now? And what are some of the challenges that he faced with, um, you know, with, 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 with the security company and just find out what's the plan, what's the goal, you know, what are you looking forward to accomplishing, you know, um, you know, just just want to talk about his um, his career and his company. And then, you know, obviously, we, you know, was going to let him tell us how much his fate has been to him in terms of, um, 
you know, for, you know, his, his, his passion for Christ and, you know, his love for his work, um, you know, I know that got to be very important for him to come to work every morning, you know, to know that, look, um, you know, he asked the Lord to bless him and keep him. And as soon as we talk about the Lord, I think he's going to come right in right now. <laughs> So we're happy for that. Let's bring him right in here. And, you know, um, yeah. Having some very bad connections today. So. All right, all right. Uh, uh, Bishop Ferguson, we're, we're going to say Bishop, you know, because you're a man of faith. Uh, the Lord is good. All right, God is good, man. God is good all the time. So we, we've been able to keep the show rolling until you get back in. So what good. we really want to do is that we're not sure how the internet gonna gonna, gonna keep up with you. So we're gonna just Good. let you take it away. Let us know, you know, the vision who that came from and the impact you have on, in, in Jamaica there in terms of whether it be the employment that you provide and the security, you know, the safety of our, our community. You know, what is it that that you guys do when when you, when you complete training where, where they branch out to? So just give us a quick overview. Just okay. In light of uh this is a vision that has been on my heart for quite some time. The fact that I was in the security industry. Uh, in 2015, I decided to move away from the regular security. I hear you saying that you were a security like myself. So yes, we have sir. a lot in common. And what if I tell you that I attended St. Elizabeth Technical? When I do research, wow. I realized we have a very lot in common. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah. I really have a lot, a lot, a lot in common. <laughs> so it was a vision. It was. It, it is a passion. What I do, I call it a passion, a vision, something that I love to do. In right. 2015, that was when I decided to leave the regular security industry. My last company was Guardsman Limited in Jamaica. Everyone knows Guardsman. It's a popular company. Then I decided to venture out on my own. So the vision was birthed on the 9th of May, 2016. So thank you for having me. We're celebrating five years. All right. What we do, trust me, over the past five years, I can say that I have contributed significantly to reducing the crime rate, improving the lives of young, we, the young unattached, drop out of school, not so much educated, at-risk boys, people who couldn't find their way, couldn't find their future. I, I am be, between the ages of 18 to 42, I have been able to impact them. So if you check right now, you will find security officers in the 14 parishes of Jamaica, small islands, America, Canada, Cayman, you name it, that have helped to reach impact, a lot of them without vision, a lot of them without dreams, but by taking them off the streets, some drop out of school, some not so up there, educationally but i've reached everyone and today a lot of them are now starting family building houses you name it we have reached them near and far all right ian let me butt in a little bit here because uh, that was something that i wanted to talk about let's let's back up a little bit let's talk about um you know because you can't come on the program um and we don't talk about stats <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so, yeah yeah so actually just tell us a little bit about um i wanted to know exactly where in saint elizabeth are you from and just tell us what years did you go to stats and um and, and what did you study while you had stats i think mm -hmm. all right i am originally from You're not hearing any sound in, right? No, no, no. Still, guys, sorry, still having some, some, some difficulties. Um, 
coming out of Santa Cruz, Jamaica. Um, you know, so, you know, so bear with us today. We're trying to get this year across, and um, you know, we understand that sometime in the time that we're in, the internet is like um, <laughs> everybody now is using the internet, so it's at high demand. So we hope that um, we apologize actually for having technical difficulty. <laughs> Oh, yep, so yeah. we have, have it again. Yeah, another statesman, you know, doing some great thing out there in, 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 in society, which is a man, man with a vision, work and integrity, you know. As I said, you know, no not no not to boast or anything, because we know every every school have, 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 have their, 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 their 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 own. Is there one of his back there, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep, yeah, yeah. Let's let's see. Yeah. <laughs> The signal is very, very bad this side. All right, you're good again, though. Good, I'm here. All right, so, so yeah, just to pick up back, um, you know, mm -hmm. just just go a quick overview because as I said, we can't come on here and not talk about um, you, you basically, we we you sit, we, we you, that's my yard, that's my that's my home right there, my, where I grew up, you know. So you know, you cut, you you know, we used to live in the same yard. So we want to talk about, um, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, yeah. Same. So yeah, so what what tier to you? Uh, just tell us where in Saint Elizabeth you're from, and what tier did you go to Stets? Um, uh, I am I am originally from the humble cool community of Pepper, Pepper District, St. Elizabeth. Okay. So that's between Goshen and uh, Gutters. And that is when 90% of the water filters the entire St. Elizabeth into Manchester. I also attended St. Elizabeth Technical High School. Woo! Yes, <laughs> I sir. attended in 2000 and I I ended schooling in 2004, so pretty young. So I, I, was, I was there when Miss Samuda was the principal. Mr. Okay. Samuda, good. All right, so, so since the kind of career that you're in, when you was at Stets, what, what were you studying and what were, what, what were you thinking that you was going to be back then when you was at school? What was, as a young boy? What, as a young boy. I did I did I did the business subjects. Okay. And in my head I thought I was gonna be a doctor. Okay. So my teacher okay. told me I love science, but you're doing the wrong subjects. But then I realized that wasn't cut out for me. <laughs> okay, so I did okay. <laughs> uh, all right, so so after leaving schools. I know that there was got to be a challenge for you in terms of, um, you know, transitioning into the, the, the into the culture world. So, what were some of the challenges you faced after graduating from Stitz? Um, I know that you know you actually said you worked um, as a security officer, but uh, after leaving Stitz, what what were some of the challenges you faced? Because it's important to know that. You know, just for some kids might be listening right now. Um, you know, or you know, when they leave school, what what were some of the things that you you realize that you know now that you're you're you got it, you're trying to find a job, and how difficult was that for you? The first the first thing I realize is I wasted a lot of my time in school. Sorry for bad company, but um. Some of the challenges I faced when I left States was one, choosing the right career path. I never had that financial stability. I never had that financial input, put it that way. My parents could not find it. So I had a lot of challenges. So some of the challenges, I wanted us to go on to Hartress or college. My, my mother, which was sick, never worked in the past 20 odd years. My dad was partially in his 60s, not able to work at like then. So I had to do things on my own. So if you ask me, I've worked in a lot of supermarkets. I've done a lot of 
other little contracts before I joined the security industry. So you're looking at someone who sees the streets, who work in supermarket, who tried to do taxi, little robot, everything when I left high school. Because I just did not have, I know what I wanted, but did not have that financial push to get me there. So it was very challenging. And I know that the goal is for you to better your life. So tell us exactly, and I know Ian might go back a little bit to Stets, but tell us exactly who, in, who told you about, how did you get into taking that job? I mean, you know, what? how did that come about? I mean, you know, tell us the first, the point where you said, I'm going to put this application in. How did that come along? I started to laugh because my cousin, which is the assistant trainer here, Mr. Sheena Falcon, she said, tell them just as though it goes. So, all right. hold on. I was at, it was 2010. It was 2010. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Don't, you're doing good. I thought it was a signal again. It was 2010. I was at, we call it Jerry Supermarket. It's Max Bargain in Santa Cruz. So everyone knows Jerry in Santa Cruz. Yeah. The baggage counter the day working. When a gentleman from God's Band came up, I don't know him. It's the first I'm seeing this man in life, but God has angels in many ways. Working 4000 or about $4,200. I think about $8,000 per fortnight. And then, then I had my, then I got my first child. She was about a year old, year old yes. The gentleman, I was at the baggage counter. Let me, I, I hope I'm reaching somebody. I was at the baggage counter without no sense of direction. I lost some self-esteem because I did not get all my subjects. As I said, I waste most of my time in school. So I was just doing it to say, right, do something to take care of my family. God just showed up one day. I think it was a Wednesday. The gentleman worked on the brings. I'm still searching for him. I cannot remember his name, but if I see him today, his face cannot miss me. He woke up to me and he said, young man like you, what are you doing here? Working in baggage counter. He said, you're a crop. And it struck me. I got irritated. He didn't mean it out of harm, but to me, I was saying he's looking down on my job. Because when he asked me what my job was like, I tell him I wipe the floor in there, a pop bag, I push out Charlie, and I, I'm at the baggage counter today. He said to me, this was how the application, this was how the whole security came into me. He said, my job that I'm doing, I can double what you work in a fortnight in one week. He said, you're a crook. Get, wake up. Set your thing, man. He instructed me you now, like my daddy, he said, I'm coming back here next week, Wednesday. Make sure when I come, I get an application letter, I get a resume. I'm going to turn your life around. And 15 years later, here I am. I thank him and wherever he is, God bless him. And that was where the venture started. All right. Excellent. Over to you, Ian. Man, I... I... Bishop Ferguson, as I listen to you, you know, your story is, is similar to many Jamaican, you know, yeah. story. As we said, you know, a lot of us, we went to school and we did not see it fit to do our school work and we didn't basically know how important it is. So, you know, some of us just never have the force behind us to, mm -hmm. to really, you know, educate you and, and tell us, hey, guess what, it is very important to have this. Because some of us going to states and we don't know, states is a school that you're going to. But a lot of, you know, skill. It's a skill school, put it that way. You know, yeah. either you can run, you can play football, you can play cricket. You know, your parents just love sports and they get you into stats. So a lot of us really kind of rely more like on our talent that that will take us all the way through. And so the sad realization, most of us, when you get to graduation, you realize that, guess what, you're leaving stats and you don't have much of a subject. You realize that yeah. why, as you say, you waste most of your time. You run with the wrong company, the wrong crew. But, you know, I am very proud that you were able to, to pick up yourself and say, oh, guess what? <laughs> I, may, I, I, I may have basically put it at your field. You feel, you feel some people along the way then, you know, because when you oh. come out the state and you're not able to pick up a scholarship or go to college or something, it's just yeah. means like you feel somebody. But you to recognize that, guess what? 
even though you're down, you're not out. You know, you, know, you, you pick up yourself. And even the fact now that you're a bishop, I know that you're now able to give back a lot to youngsters who are lost along the way. You know, I love, I love. I, 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 and this is my question to you is, uh, you know, because now you're a bishop and everything. How are you able to, to, to basically change the mindset of these youngsters who basically, you know, at somehow they, they felt lost? Uh, let me start by using myself. It was then when the young, when the gentleman said to me, you're a cross, you can be far ahead in life. That was when I saw myself. And that was when I took up the mantle, went back, went into the security industry, started going back to school. When I left Steds, I only left Steds with a grade three in agricultural science. Today, I have English, I have POB, I have accounts, I have maths. I'm sitting on five subjects. I have been to Hard Trust. I've been to the State University of Delaware. If you look behind me right now, Yes, sir, if you take it. Wow, wow, all right. Congratulations, man. I've been to the Vocational Training Development Institute, so I have now seen the need for positivity education, building myself. So in the capacity of bishop, in the capacity of security trainer, this is where it has now taken me. This was the best medium to impact, to grasp, to touch, to affect, to motivate, to encourage, and to build these young people educationally physically mentally emotionally spiritually so it is not just a business for me but it's something i love to do to impact to reach and to tell people all is not lost because of my story i know you can be what god created you to be and you can get where god needed you to go so my life is a perfect example not strained from your question but just one more thing to that you're good man you're looking at someone who the community where I'm from in Pepper, everyone called me tease because the reality was yes. There were days when I had to take out a little money out of the taxi man kitty, I had to stole from persons, <laughs> I had to sell some. Oh, well, we're losing him on a good note here, Ian. Uh, we're, we're losing you, we're losing you, we're losing you. We know why you talk too much yet, you know. Yeah, we'll come back in. Hold on, hold on. Let me see what happened. He mute himself here. Let me get him off mute. I think he mute himself accidentally. You mute yourself. You're listening to us. Take off mute. Hit the mic. Yeah, there you go. Sorry about that. Why you will you take out some of the taxi man money? All right, right there. <laughs> yes, so as I was saying, persons who fail are persons who choose to fail. Persons who is not matriculating and is not making it in life, it is a choice. Because I, as I said earlier, before the internet went off, I used to steal the man money. I used to go on the roadside in Pepper, right out the dairy farm. I see you drove past it the other day. Sell mango sweets up, popcorn on, on the streets of Santa Cruz, just to better myself. Now, some of the names I got before I, I am where I am today, people call me Thief, people call me Scalp, people call me Old Boy, Dirty This Crop, you name it. A lot of persons today said I would not be anywhere in life. They, they even said that um, I will not end up anywhere more than prison. Thank God I'm 35 years old this year. Yeah, very young. 35 years old this year. I've never been in handcuff. I've never been to jail. I've never been to prison. And out of this, I have birthed two training institutions, Manchester, 17 Ward Avenue, Mandible, and Institution Drive, St. Elizabeth. When I check my record, I have trained over 3,000 persons in becoming security officers there in the various companies. I am married. I'm a family man. I have my own home, my own vehicle, my visa. So I'm coming to look for you shortly, Ian. <laughs> <laughs> we have ministry in Maidpen, in Mandeville. I have gone right around the parish to... 
and motivational speaks with young persons unattached dropout just to tell them where i'm coming from so i thank god i'm not a failure and i can tell them that they will not be failure either they can be what god destined for them that that is that is powerful that is powerful you know really proud of you and and, and, and the road that you decide to take because you know a lot of people have allowed what people say Good. for them to basically be it. You know, you know, but, but you are able to use those words, uh, those negative words, and turn them into positive yes. accomplishments. You, you basically say, guess what? Eat your word. You know, that's not going to happen. You're not going <laughs> to <laughs> okay. Really proud of you and, and, and that part, man. You know, your story right now is, is very inspirational very educative and the fact that you have also journey along with god that is even a key yeah. part of this because you know some people you have some people you, you know and them say why not curse god and die i tell you you know but exactly. despite you're going through all of this you were led to christ could you tell us how that part happened well uh my daddy that <laughs> went to church would beat me every sunday morning to go to service <laughs> My mother also, she was integral in the church. So she, we were, bought, we were brought up in church. But the real push came when, when I realized the path that was going, when I, re, when I realized it was just God. It was just, it was just purpose. It was just God. Trust me. I can't. All right, guys, we, we we know this too well. Whenever we, we, we touch on the topic of God, we, we realize that, <laughs> yeah, we, we, this is how we started out, you know. <laughs> Whenever we touch on the topic of God, we realize that we, we have the most challenges ever. And I, I would say this to most people out there, you know, whenever you decide to pick up the arm and start following God, trust me, that's when you start to have challenge. That's when trouble start coming your way. You know, it's not, you know, some people think that when you start following Christ, that's when everything gonna just turn around and you know it's gonna be smile smiles and happy days every day. I tell you, it's it, it, it's that's where your challenge starts. That's where your trouble begins. And the same thing we're experiencing some problem here. He's, he's talking about him coming to Christ after being called you here, thief, old dirty boy, or worthless boy, or scammer, everything that is bad, basically. But as you listen, this man have used that to turn it around. He has now two two institutions that he trained security officers. He's also a bishop in the church because we wanted to bring him on Sunday gone the early part of you know, 6 o'clock. And he said, Ian, I have a preaching engagement. So that has gone to show how far this young man have come from hearing all of those negative comments and those remarks that was passed upon him that he would spend his days in prison. The man have just told us that he have not had a handcuff put over his arms and he have never been to prison. Instead, he have used those words to motivate himself, elevate himself out of that lonely place. Because as you know, going through all of that, you're going to go into depression. You know, those are some of the things that happen to you when you find yourself at that place where people of the community, society, he said it is in his own community that some of these negative words came from so you just imagine as a young man running around with no job or anything you know or, or nothing stationary well he said he was selling out a, a, out of paper this so I, I know out there too well people come out sell kneesberry and, and come out and sell aki and you know whatever you want you find it right up on the roadside there a, a, a pepper you know, from time to time, I stop and buy Nisberg because I always love Nisberg. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I break a thousand dollars to buy one Nisberg. That, that's how much I love Nisberg. So, you know, to see this young man elevate himself so much is nothing but real inspiration. And, 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 and this will definitely motivate others. I, I, I just, I'm just sorry that he don't have the internet connection that we'd really love to have. You know, so he could really tell his story and we could really get more out of him. But I know, you know, one day we'll come together probably on a platform that we can have him basically speak straight 
to some people because you know this man is a man of god just you know as joan i've just said god has been good man god has been good god has been good yeah bro you could finish up you know if, if we're gonna take you the whole time if you come out and come in man we, we are gonna have you share your story that we, we do we, have my viewers, all my viewers, we're sorry, but as you know, the online schooling, the meetings, so the, the, the internet, the network is overcrowded. But yes, what led me to Christ, what led me to leadership was the struggles when I see that I did not end up in prison, as person said, when I see that I did not become any way worse than what they belittled me to do. And so, on the other hand also, I had, I had a good friend, he invited me to church, and from there I fell in love with his bishop, his leadership, he's not one that write up, criticize, or condemn, and so from then, the rest is just history. So, I'm in leadership now over four years, growing strong, uh, three branches with over 1,500 members, and trust me, we're doing a good job. We're doing a good job so far. All right, man. Well done. Well done. Uh, Ian, I don't know if you have any questions to come in with. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just, you know, when you talk about the institution driving Santa Cruz, man, um, you know, that's that's my street right there. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So I live on that street there for five years, 12 oh. to make it known. It's 12 institution. I don't know how far down an institution are you, but um, I'm right in the middle across before you get to that church. I used to live with a gentleman. His name is Mr. God is all. Oh. Uh, yeah. And, uh, from me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Church of Prophecy. Church of God of Prophecy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I used to live right there and... Um, it was very close to the library, so I used to walk up to the library every Saturday morning. And then um, they used to, actually used to be a shortcut right beside that house there, cut yes. through. Yes. So I used to walk through there. Shaka can't see me. The principal, when you walk through the bush, when I get right up there, I cut through the center and cut mm -hmm. through the bush. So can't come inside of Santa Cruz because... Shaka might be driving down and you know <laughs> that's gonna be trouble right there. So you got <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, so you're bringing back some members right there. But um yeah, but um uh, I, I just said um you know for 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 what you have been doing in terms of career opportunity, tell us a little bit about for for the type of training um you know in terms of um I know that obviously what do you focus on your training? Give us a little, like a little background. What what would be, you know, the, the, the breakdown of the the different type of training? Um, and how long would you require to um, what type of um, you know, training you would have to to to, to go through to, to to before you get on the road? <laughs> All right. Um, it is mandatory. It is required by law that they undergo a two to three weeks training. So it's not a long or a lengthy process, but it's a lot of work. So under the Private Security Regulation Authority, we call it the PSRA Act. It is a, the PSRA is an agency under the Ministry of National Security. So it is required that you undergo two to three weeks training and evaluation and out of this two weeks training, some of the topics we have, they, they're given physical, physical in the term of they will have to do some exercise. So that's where we prepare them physically, because that's one of the requirements of the job. And then they will have in class practicum. So some of the topics would be customer service, patrolling, the use of force policy, the, the use of excessive force. They, they are taught how to properly write a report, how to socialize with other persons, their roles, their duties, their responsibilities as a security officer. So uh, when you talk about professionalism, when you talk, uh, 
Well, we do far more than, let me put it this way, we do far more. Because when they come here, they're also given interview skill. They have a career day in which they have to dress professionally in their tall sleeve shirt, tie like they're going to church. So they're groomed. We have motivational speakers. Well, I myself, you just imagine, help to grab past students and come back and share their life, their experience, their story. Just push, motivate, and encourage them. So right now, if you check out of this institution, I have 20 year old today that is supervisor in Hawkeye security. God's man, I'm God, on the brink struck and all over because of this training. So as I said, it's not just security we look at, but we build their mind, we stretch their vocabulary, we strengthen them even after training. If you check my phone now from 2016, five years later, you find over 50 WhatsApp group. I keep in touch with them, I correspond with them, still encourage, motivate, push them to go higher because of what I've been through. So we bring them to another level in the security aspect. Oh, let me just add quickly before I go. This is how far we build and prepare them. Today, I have trainees who is serving the JCF, who is serving the correctional departments, who is serving the JDF, and we're also in other countries. So that is how far we build, motivate, prepare, and elevate them to go. So it's amazing how I was going into St. James the other day, and in the state of emergency, a gentleman walked over to me and called me by my name. But you know the mask. So I said, Mr. Farkas, I said, which soldier know me now? <laughs> and pulled down the mask. He said, this is Mr. Brown. God bless you, sir. Thank you. I can never forget you. You and your team did a fantabulous job. So we, we go that far. All right. Awesome. Awesome. So a couple little questions here for you. What's the age requirement to, to work for your company? We start at age 18 and we end at age 42. So between the ages of 18 to 42, because some companies goes up to 45, but I stop at 42 because they're looking on strength, maturity, stability. So as long as you're 18 and mature, between 18 to 42, we have them enrolled. Okay. And is there any special requirement um, in terms of high school graduate or anything like that? CXC. Well, as I said earlier, we attend to drop out. So, you know, okay. Have, okay. Um, unattached. But the basic requirement is basic maths, even up to grade nine level. But the reality is, no subject is not required. But if they have the basic maths, basic English, that is a plus for them. <laughs> if they have okay. CX, you name it, it, it is a plus for them. Just one, and they must, it is, it is a must. They're able to read and write. Okay. That's very important. Okay, okay. So just moving along, um, in terms so typically um your recruitment strategy, do you do you just um, do you have a special strategy that you're recruiting? Do you are you basically just have a um a application process? I mean, how difficult or how easy it is for you to find people to work for you? It's very, very, very easy for them to get in. And the first process is an application process. So they fill out the application form and they're given an assessment to know where they are. So that is, you talk about maths, English, current affairs. So they go through that process because we don't want to leave anyone behind. So we test their knowledge and their skills to see where they are. So we know how to work with them. So it's easy for them to get in. Just the application letter and the assessment, and then we take it from there. Okay. So yeah. as of today, is your is your organization still hiring and taking in people as we so, speak? Even in this COVID, it, it had not slowed us down. It has not stopped us. It, it is We follow all the COVID protocol, but trust me, it is growing because the security industry, because of crime and all different madness is in demand. So it has not slowed us down. Even yesterday, a company recruited 10, just 10, one, one time, five male, five female. So recruiting is still on. It is not slowing down. Okay. So in terms of the, the job opportunities, um, how is are the long-term, short-term, 
what normally in terms of are you hire the person and then you find them the job or you basically find them the job and then um you know you 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 give them uh like a, a temporary job how does that work he, oh yeah uh, yeah he's mostly school and he prepare them so he's he basically sending them out so we, we, we do both aspects we do both aspects so we prepare them and yes I will have I will have all various companies that call me. You have Island Alert Security Company Limited. You have Shell. Okay. You have Gaston. You have Hawker. You have Quest. You have Atlas. There are various companies that are linked to me. Okay. So after preparing them, a lot of them go right out into jobs. Okay. okay. Into the network we have. So we try not to have them sitting down months after. They're through, they meet the, the prerequisites, they're right off into jobs. Okay. Right up to the parish. Okay. All right. I got it a little clearer now. So when you prepare them and send them out, what, what's one thing that you want them to remember from your institute when, you, when they go there in the, in the school? Good question. Yeah. I want them to remember that we have been protecting a character for the past five years, number one. So when we send them out, we tell them, you're, you have to maintain your professionalism. You have to maintain our standard here because there are persons who are coming after you who's going to need the same help. Send them the mail. We tell them, don't forget us. A lot of them don't remember us. We tell them, back with us. We also tell them to remember the golden rule wherever you go because of your certificate. You will either hinder or help others to come on. All right, well said, well said. So that that that's some very good information because as I said, we want people when they watch this program or we want to inspire them or you know maybe there are things that they're not knowing they're back somewhere and they don't you know they're on the internet on the phone and they might come across this this program so. That's that's very 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 so a three week process evaluating, yeah. and it doesn't matter what your situation you yeah. know you will assess them and 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 and, and think so. My next question before I send it over to Ian is um, so in terms of um, what type of um, struggles are you know if you were supposed to need some assistant um, I know you're a private business but what can be done more in terms of the local community to you know that you would want for your business to, to continue to do the service that you're doing i'm glad you asked that question yeah i have reached out in many ways but has not gotten that support that i needed i would want the church community i would want uh what you call a neighborhood watch I would want to work with the police youth club because they are they would be my main support now in keeping the business afloat. They, they, they I I would want to target the principals. So as they leave high school, the churches have a lot of unemployment, the police youth groups, the neighborhood watch, they know a lot of unattached, troubled, at-risk young people. I would want them to partner with me. Just take my number, call me. And we find ways and means of getting those. Because if we can, if we can get the young people, we will have less crime. And that is my main aim to cut right. down crime rate. So I need those persons to come out and support us. Yes, we're struggling because of the COVID, but not knocked out. We would be grateful for some financial assistance. But as I said. If I get the persons in from those different groups, we're good to go. And if persons can sponsor, sponsor, yeah, sponsor male or female from the church or from the community, because as I said, this job is in demand and it's a sure job. So instead of giving me a fish every day, teach me to fish. So I need them on board. All right, well said. All right, over to you, Ian. All right, uh, Bishop Ferguson. I, I want to touch something important because maybe there are persons out there who have little reading, not so, uh, let, me, let, me, let me give it in their word, not so hot on the reading, not so hot on the writing. 
I can use his name with permission, Kenil Medley from Braze River District in the community of St. Elizabeth. As he always tell me, feel free to use my name. I've even put him on my Facebook page. When he came to me and in, in 2018, he could have hardly read, he could have hardly write, he could have hardly helped himself. But he came and he said, sir, I have a situation, but I need to get out of this, I need to work, I need to take care of my family. Me, myself and my trainers, we work with him. Today, the man that could hardly read, could hardly put his name in the book, is in the Cayman Islands. He served as a security officer today in Cayman Islands. And not only that, the last time I spoke to him, he's promoted to supervisor. So your challenges or your past or your struggles does not determine you from achieving what you want to achieve. Thank you. All right, all right. And let, let me ask you one question, because this is another question. It's very important. What do you want people to know about security officers? If you were supposed to let people, the local people, the community, when they see a security officer, what do you want, what message would you want to tell them about security officers? Good question. Yeah. I want them to know that gone already the day when they call them Gaddy and Yard Boy. They're professional. The fact that you have to be licensed under the Private Security Regulation Authority, you have to sit in classroom. I tell my trainees, you are a professional because anything you have to go to school for, it is a profession. So it's nothing to look down on or feel ashamed. You are a professional. So I want them to know that, as a matter of fact, a lot of these persons in the bank, in government agencies, a lot of time I see them come right back to me. I have, I have trained soldiers. I have trained police officers. Why? Because the money that my guards are working, they don't see that on a monthly basis. I have security officers that can take home $100,000 per month. They can get loans up to $1.5 million. They're, as I said, 25-year-old right now, they're building houses. They're, they're buying cars. They're getting married. Right now, I have wedding to go next month. About three, they're all trainees. So it is nothing to look down on. It's not a degrading job. Gone ready day. You're now a professional. It is this much professional that if someone attack you on your location, and it ends up in the court, your company is going to afford you a lawyer. If you look on my blackboard right now, we're on the topic this morning, user force policy. They're protected by law. So I don't want him to feel benicked and believe it's a small, I am um, in this crisis, I have persons with bachelor's degree that I've trained, persons with masters because they can't get any job on the job cut. However, the security employment rate has gone up by almost 50 percent thank you all right well said i think it's a very very you you're going to the days right now where um you know it you gotta be balanced to go out there because you, you know you go to, to 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 anywhere you go some of the time the security officers is the first person that you're gonna meet <laughs> good but right now National Commercial Bank and Scotia Bank, if you walk in right now, a security officer is the first one you see. And they're, they're your customer service rep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So far it goes. They, they're, they're, they have undergone training. They have learned now to, they, they now assist you with the ATM. <laughs> the they, they, they have now assist you in opening accounts. They, they're, there's a lot of different avenues and opportunities. We have what we call vault cashier. We have supervisor we have managerial position so the security field is wise very wise yeah, yeah, yeah. very 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 fast grown field um i'm very happy that you were able to come here and shed some light onto it all right over to you ian all right so for all our viewers who may just be joining or who been here from the beginning i just want to go over um so to let you know that we have with us Kaneel ferguson bishop and principal and founder of Professional Security Institute. And he has one branch in Mandeville, Ward Avenue, and one Santa Cruz Institution Drive. This man have basically went through the high school system, did not accomplish all he wanted at that time. 
being called all the names in the community, you know, being looked down upon by 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 society, but he was able to pick himself up, know what he wanted, go out there for it. You know, he had faith, he believed, so he realized a man of God, man of God own heart, and not that he just went out there and find it and make it for himself, but at this point, he's willing to bring others. He, that's how he went on to farm the institute. Cause he was a security officer himself. So yes. he would have known the struggles you know, that of, of, of an officer. He would have known the struggle of a last boy in a community. And as a result, I've decided to give back to society, providing employment. And as you have heard, customer service, that means they are professional, trained. And you can listen. Some of them are used as motivational speaker, he himself traveled the country to do that. And this is the reason why we bring on people like Bishop Ferguson onto the platform. So that you can see, guess what? No matter what life throws at you, you know, guess what? You can always overcome. They say they throw you sour orange, man. Take it, make some lime juice or lemon juice or whatever. Don't just look at it as a sour taste. Use it but, as an opportunity. Yeah, mm -hmm. man. So, you know, this is so, so, so good to see that we have people like you still in our community. And what you're doing, basically, you're helping to curb crime. Because by yes. providing employment and yes. by empowering the mind of these youngsters, yes. Employment, but not just employment, but also people who are able to go out there and also be role models for others from what you're doing, you know. And I just want to say, it, 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 it is it is good to see that we have people like you still today, you know. You know despite what people say, and, and I just want to know, try over to the crime because we know, you know, we, we, are, we are being criticized because of crime and a whole overall but i just want you to speak on that particular era in terms of crime in jamaica and we know that you have officers that are basically working in in high risk areas you know who work in the bank who work at the moneygram who work at the western union who work at this big supermarket chain you know they are basically uh, the first person that these criminals want to seek out that spot with their location and so forth but how do you condition these youths, their mindset, to know that even though it's a risky job, but we should still go out there and still serve? So you guys are serving the community, serving you know, the businesses. You know. how, how, how are you able to, to lift them to that point that they see that, guess what, what, what we're doing it, 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 it is very important? Yes, it's a part of the training. We teach them how to conduct their self. <laughs> We, we let them know, yes, it's a risky job. Your life is at risk. But as long as you apply the steps of training in the real working world, then you, you won't do that much at harm. And also, they will get the physical aspect. My trainer is an ex-JDF soldier. They get self-defense. They are taught how to use a button, a handcuff, etc., etc. So even with the crime, we let them know that, look, you're, you're given the power, similar to that of a police, where you can detain, you can apprehend. And at the same time, their observation skills, that's a part of the training that also helps them to pinpoint shoplifters, criminals, robbers, so they can take precautions before things happen. So they are well prepared in tackling and dealing with crime. All right. Um, I don't know if you are listening to me earlier. You have to turn it a little bit. But, you know, I, I told you when I got into security, you know, the stigma that surrounds um, security, you know, and I said, I, I don't even want to refer to a security as a guard man, a guard or anything, that's how people would refer to it. But I was called that name, you know. I, I, I was referred to as being a guard. In that people of society, despite you're putting your life on the line to, to basically either protect their property, their life, their business, there's still some people in our society who looks down on the career path of a security officer. 
what would you want those people who who, who, who see it in that sense? What do you want them to, to know about security and the real, real, real function? I want them to know that security, one, is not doing the job of a police officer. I want them to know that security are no professionals. Security is the one that protects their life and property. Security is the one that when they're in their bed, protect, even in the day at the banks, in the supermarkets, in the stores, the same person they look on, they are the persons who are making sure that they are carrying out their duties, which is to protect life and property. I also want them to know that they're looking down on security, but security has come up far away over the past 20 years. It is professional. It is now depicting it has more meaning, more values, more benefits. So gone were the days when we were just guardy and watchman. I want them to know that they are now dealing with professionals. So they're not to look down on them. Because remember, we are just a If you're not trained, if you're not certified, they cannot go out there. All right. Well said. I, I, I would say, say the same thing to man. I, I say these are people who deserve more, far more recognition, you know, for the service that that they do. And yeah. even with you trying to do your best, I wish I even the government could come on board, uh, even tap up their pay too, you know. That's my dream. That's my dream. <laughs> yeah, because you know, really, they, they, every day that they get up out of their bed to go out there, they know the risk that they're gonna be taking. And I think that even the unknown that they don't know what people are planning behind, you know. So, but yet still, they they're waking up every single morning or every day to go out there and do that, and they're doing it without even reservation. And, and we really have to respect that about a security officer and and give them the prompts and the thumbs up that they deserve. In terms of, I said they serve, they serve as you said, just like a law enforcement officer. You know? I, 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 and it's a good thing to have them around, have them in our business places, have them in our community. And as I said, I think the government, as you said, now we need to join force with you guys. Yes. Get, to come uh, and much, yeah, even as neighborhood watch community officers, you know, and give 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 a give, give a guy you know, a, 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 a honest bread for his work. And as you said, they are trained in so much other areas, so it's not like they're just there to just do one thing and they can, you know, pivot and do other stuff. So exactly. it's up to you, I bet you to find over 10 to 15 other areas that you can place your officers in. You know, fill, fill, fill them in some areas that is, 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 is needed. So I really appreciate what you're doing, man. And I'll give you the last one. I know you're taking out of your busy time. You know, anything you want to say, you go back to it. Signal went out a while ago. You're good again. He probably didn't hear your question here. So, uh, Bishop Ferguson, I'm just giving yeah. you the time. To, anything you want the public to know, anything you want the government to know, anything you need to get out there, this is your time to get it out there. Okay. Thank you. All right. I would want the government, of course, to come on board. I would want to get the government to know that my the security industry is important. The security industry is what protects, because even the government facilities has to use security. So I want them to know that security need better benefits, security need more, should I say, clearance, security need more from them in the terms of we would want to see security officers just gradually going over to even district constables because of the training, because of the way we were built. I would want to see much more being done. Better, I would want companies, because you have some companies going through this process that they're not up to date. As long as a person has their PSR and certificate, I want to see companies do more for them. I also want to see our country in large start to respect and appreciate security officers more. 
when I say I want to see more benefits while they're alive, not when they're dead, I want to see the loans, the banks make it easier for them to access loans, NHD make it easier for them to access homes, right across the board. I want to see far more benefits. As a matter of security officers still has to be working on contracts. I want to see them as staff. If you're not dead, you don't get any benefits in the under the insurance policy. I want to see the government go back to the books and see what can be done to improve the lives of security officers. Any, 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 any word for a young man or a young woman who is out there and basically struggling to find themselves in employment or just self struggle with self esteem you know, as, as you said you know you went into that phase where, where you lost you know your self confidence and all that how, how would you speak into something personal to that young man or that young woman watching or even will be watching later I would love to say to them that the unemployment rate is high Colleges, yes, a lot of them have degrees and so on, but have to be going overseas to get jobs. I would love to say to them that security is an excellent way out. Security is a way of improving your life, your well-being, your family, your financially, right across the board. And also to that young man or that young woman who has self-esteem, who is under peer pressure, who is facing struggles, some of them have been abused, emotionally by not well not physically but also emotionally by what persons say about them how persons degrade them or look down on them i want to say to them that you create your own destiny my days instead the motto said work and integrity god help those who help themselves you need to stop from put on this pretty party this pretty party stop feel sorry about yourself and get up and remember who's talking about you put them behind you put them in the past it is time for you to build your self-esteem build your character motivate yourself push yourself because if i did not develop that mindset if i did not develop that thing inside of me to say look hey you, they are not god you will not hinder me you are going where you need to go. I need to go where I need to go. The other thing is your friends, the company you keep, your church family, your, your immediate family, your husband, your wife. You need the right people to push you, to motivate you, to elevate you. And in my closing, people need to just find a different label. Change a label that people put on you. They call you thief, they call you crook, they call you no good. We know the words. As far as the dog drunk, you will never be anything in life. You need to change that label and say, I am purposefully and wonderfully made. I am a possibility. I am I'm going to be who God called me to be. People just need to develop a mind. It's all about the mind. It's simple, the mind. Just develop that mindset. Just put the right things in place, but it boils down back to your friends. If my friends cannot encourage, build, motivate me, I don't need them in my life. If my family cannot stand up with me, even if I don't have the money and you don't have the money, and I come forward and said, I want to do this, I'm going to say yes. Those are the person you want. You need some people who want to say yes. You need some people who are going to say you can do it. You need some people who can say, look, man, it doesn't matter what you're going through. You're raped, you're abused, you're coming from prison, you're in the one bedroom. I'm talking about myself now. Seven brothers of us, seven brothers of us, mother and father in one bedroom. The outside, we know we call it pit latrine. So I know where I'm coming from. As I said earlier, you're looking at somebody they call thief. They say I wouldn't make it. They call me scammer. They say I must go to prison. But I had a few friends who every day encouraged me and said, look, you can be great. You can be successful. You can be above and not beneath. Those are the kind of people you need in your life right, right now. Positive people, people who are going places. 
Well said, well said. Ian. Um, you know, just just happy that we're able to to to, to, to get this thing here uh, today and we'll with the help of you know, even though we have got some technical difficulty. Um so Mr. Farkins, are you re are you related to any of the athletes, any of the Russell or um any of those girls that do the sports and event at Stets? I was called the Farkas in the land, come from Scotland, and it means wealthy and rich. Well, I'm a replica of that. <laughs> so, um, yes, any athlete, any great man and woman out there who has the name Farkas, especially the multi billionaires, we're family. We're family, even if you don't know me. So, you need to use this program today to reach out to me. <laughs> Because I have some family I'm trying to find. <laughs> but yes, I was told that the Farkas will raise her to be Okay, okay. Well, that, as I said, very powerful name from the football field to the track and field team out of the great institution of St. Elizabeth Technical and then the, the, you know, the parish of St. Elizabeth and all over. So we're just so happy, man. We want to wish you all the best. Um, I know that I was reading that you're actually in process of expanding into Clarendon. So, yes. um, you know, with your company, with the growth and everything. So we pray and I hope that you continue to develop an institution that could continue to create jobs and to help young people or anyone to 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 get out and um look you know just to do something and just to realize that you know um the security industry is 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 um a a, a a career just like any other business or any other thing you know and you might could go to school for one thing but sometimes there's another calling for you you know um we all realize sometimes we're bet we're good at things you know so we just want people to have an open mind and to see this thing is not as a, a way to, to just to do some money, but actually has a passion and a love for it. Because um, that makes a difference when you're able to work and, you know, give it your all. So we're happy that you, as I said, take some time out today to come on the program. And I Good said, man. we wish you all the best. And um, I know that God is going to continue to use you. And you know, you know, continue to do the good work. So, um, you know, so that's my closing remarks, Ian. You know, and that's uh, all right, uh, Bishop Ferguson. Quick one. So, say a youngster want to get a hold of your application form. You know, how do they get in touch with you? How do they get your application form? You know, and is, is there an incentive to send people your way and all that stuff? What, what, what's the fun stuff there? How do they get involved? All right, for persons who want to reach us, because the time is going and I might see my battery dead, we have websites, we have email addresses, but I'll just give out the phone numbers so I hope persons have their pen and paper. Take the phone numbers. Oh, I see what, see if I can just post just now. <laughs> Love <it. laughs> I have to pause for that, sorry. <laughs> yes. So you you got a to... lot of forkings. You got another one here. Um, you know, you got it. Oh. You got it. My wife now. My wife is <laughs> and Parkinson. <laughs> All right. So you see, Parkinson is wide and big. And we're also a family oriented business. So my trainers and secretary, if you walk in the office, you will all hear the name Parkinson. So right now, the numbers are on the screen to save me the time. You're looking at the St. Elizabeth number. So just call or send us a WhatsApp. Because WhatsApp is the way now. And then we will give them email address and website to go to get the application form. And we're moving right now as we speak by next month to online classes because of the COVID. So we ask persons to contact us in Santa Cruz at 479-2716. And well, persons are overseas. So let me say 876-479-2716 or 876-541-0855. That is for the Santa Cruz St. Elizabeth office. If they want to reach us in Ward Avenue, Mandible, it's 
chat, sorry. 876-447-9638 or 876-535-8794. So they can just call or send us a WhatsApp and we will be more than happy to provide all the relevant information to them. So we encourage them to come get certified today. All right. Uh, we just want to say, man, we, we really are very happy and thankful that you're able to take the time out from your busy schedule to be here sure. during this busy hour here, the lunch hour, you know. Uh, for, like, uh, yeah, we, we, we are going up, man. Uh, but, you know, I just want to say that your your life journey is really an inspiration, not just to me, but also to many others. And I'm happy that they're using you at least in the capacity that you're traveling and you can use your life to inspire other young men and young women out there. You know, it, it is definitely a motivation. And uh, just to see the road that you have chosen, you know, yeah. your walk, the, the, the Christian walk, you know, being a bishop, that is enough in itself to show that, you know, you're a disciplined person. You are basically a family man, married and everything. We just we don't have all the time and we didn't get the internet service we wish. Uh, we could get in, in, more into the family life, but we know we'll bring you on another time you know, where you require some of your knowledge in regards to the whole uh, Christian, uh, Christianity, biblical, and family life as a whole, you know, and just just be, being able to be here and sharing your story, I can tell you that, man, it is touching, but, you know, the, 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 the biggest thing about it is that you, you made it, you know, yeah. despite all that was happening around you, despite all the names that you were called, Despite all the, 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 the load and baggage that they give you, you know, <laughs> and, you know, it, 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 it is just fun, man, to see you to shake off all of that, you know. They said I'm trying to throw I'm, I'm dirt by you, you shake that come up, you know. You just have to climb further. So I know you're gonna have people who are very disappointed now that you're making it because they have to eat work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and that, and that, this is how funny life is in you know, a uh, bishop. Is that somebody will tell you say so you never gonna make it at one point? I wouldn't even see how I make it. It's still a bad man. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> no, it's a blessing, man. I, we're really pleased to have you. So thank you very much. Uh, we'll share the broadcast and, and, and definitely the Lord is gonna take it to higher heights. You know, you'll, you'll open yeah. more across the country. And thank you. That, that's my vision to have to be in the 14 parishes shortly, touching and impacting life. You, you will, man. You continue to walk the feet, man. Walk the walk that you've been walking, you know. And, I will. And, I will. and definitely, you know, the Lord will, will fulfill all of those dreams and plans that you have. 2021, they say it's going to be a challenging year, but I just mm -hmm. ask that you make this one of your most productive and blessed year. Good. It will be. All right. I have to run myself. Ian and Ian, thank you for having yeah, me on the Real Talk show. It was good taking my lunch time. I'm now in the students' time. <laughs> All right. Take it easy, man. Say hi for me. All right. <laughs> so it's a pleasure. And All right. All right. It was my pleasure. Thank you.